Hi, hello, I'm GD Game Dev Colon, and I made a game! So this is Treacherous Trials, it's a short puzzle platforming game I made over 10 days for my friend Lofi, or Chloe's birthday. She's got all this interesting headcanon lore for the Geometry Dash level 9 circles, and so I ended up making a whole game around it. Basically, I wanted to make a game for a while. I remembered her birthday and her 9 circle stuff, and I was like, wait, this gives me a bunch of cool game mechanic ideas. So I opened up Unity, said goodbye to my social life, got together with some friends, and spent probably like a hundred hours working on this over the next ten days. And then uh, it was released exactly one week ago today, and honestly I'm pretty happy with the final result. So this video is going to be a sort of developer commentary for the game, where I talk about what went into making it, or explain certain decisions that I made. You don't have to, but I would recommend playing the game for yourself before watching this. Link's in the description, you can play it right from your browser, it works on mobile, if you're fine with some buggy, broken controls. <laughs> also, before we begin, I just want to quickly speed run through the credits and go over everyone who helped make this game possible. So, the majority of the stuff in the game was done by me, because I'm just that good, and I also don't have a life. Uh, like it says here, it was based on the lore and character by Lofi, or Chloe, I think I'm probably just gonna say Chloe, forgive me. So the actual character you'll see in the game, the pixel art for that was done by my friend Nilly. It came out super good, there's a ton of cool animations and everything. They also drew all these little doodles on the credit screen and they look super nice. Background music, it's just a 12 second loop, but that was done by Mudstep. There's a couple layers to the music, you'll hear that later. There's a few pixelated icons throughout the games, like GD icons, those were done by Jordan TRS. The background was done by Netba, he did the little shrine background that I use in my streams and some videos now. He's absolutely cracked. He also came up with the name of the game, Treacherous Trials. Uh, thank God, because every name we came up with sounded terrible. Uh, forgive me, I'm going to butcher this name, it's Yakumo, I believe? but he's like one of the lead developers for Rhythm Doctor and A Dance of Fire and Ice, and I was like, hey, can you help me with Unity stuff? And he was like, sure. He also kind of came in clutch and helped with some last minute WebGL bugs. And then Neku, he just kind of helped me understand Nine Circles lore and emotional support. And then also Zobros, Ruckus, Rob Top, just the actual Nine Circles people. So screw it, let's get into the game. Uh, it starts off with this little just jumping up intro sequence. I made that in like 10 minutes. The game's, I don't want to say it's rushed, but it's definitely rushed because I only had 10 days to make this. Uh, this little wall at the start is a direct reference to the start of the level problematic. It, it has something very similar when you respawn. So it's sort of just your basic platformer right now. Arrow keys to move, space to jump and that's all you need for this level. So one of the reasons I really wanted to make a game was just to exercise all the random game dev stuff I've learned over time. So in this case, uh, the first obstacle in the level is just this random lump here. It's pretty straightforward, it just teaches you that you press space to jump. Who would have guessed? And then directly after that is another one that's slightly taller. And this, this is sort of my way of showing that you have to hold space to jump higher, which is very common in games. Two blocks high is the highest that you can jump. You'll notice the character walks pretty slowly and jumps pretty low, which will kind of help emphasize some of the mechanics you'll see later on. The whole level's pretty safe. You have to be stupid to die on this one. This is the first actual obstacle. It's a spike. You touch it, it kills you. The hitboxes are pretty lenient though. This is just like some basic platforming, kind of like the first area of Hollow Knight to make sure you're not terrible at video games. And then uh, once you get here, I never really explain what this is, but it's pretty obvious. Most people will just try jumping or pressing a button and that will end the level. So level two, you're kind of in this weird enclosed area. And then so once you reach this point, it's a dead end. You can't move on, and a tutorial message pops up saying that while you're on the ground you can press down to shift. So what does that do? Well, it kind of works like an on-off switch in Mario. So anything that was on becomes off, anything that was off becomes on. You also notice an extra piano layer gets added to the music. Actually, the original plan was going to be like, uh, the music was just going to be completely cut out, no music, until you reach this point in the level, and then when you shift for the first time, the music kicks in. Originally, the song was going to be like a minute long, and it just gets an extra instrument layer when you shift, 
but it ended up being a 12 second loop where piano gets added. This was supposed to just be part of the regular song, but uh, for the sake of time, we had to cut it. I, st I still think it sounds really nice though. So yeah, you can shift on and off. You can do it as many times as you want, as long as you're standing on the ground. You cannot shift while you're in the air. Uh, and if you like shift while you're standing on a spike, then you'll die. So this, this is like the core mechanic of the game. Uh, you can also shift while moving, which is something I literally added the morning before the game was released. Previously, you had to be standing still to shift, but I was like, you know what, that's bad for speedruns, and I finally got over my stubbornness and was like, you know what, sure, you can shift while uh, moving. So this is just kind of like showing you how it works. In this case, you can shift across this bridge, and then again. I, I think it's introduced pretty nicely. And then that's the end of the level. These first few levels are very easy. There's 10 levels total. The first five are like tutorial levels. So again, uh, you can see there's blocks, but they're sort of grayed out disabled and they appear when you shift. The background also goes black. And uh, this is when the next tutorial message pops up telling you that you can press Z while you're in the air to dash. So dashing works very similar to like Cuphead, I would say, but you can only do it while you're in the air. I could have done ground dashing, but I built, I, I built the whole game with you not being able to do that, so I was kind of stubborn. Uh, so you can jump, and then you dash in the direction you're facing, you leave that cool little trail. Shout out to Unity's trail renderer. And so you have a very open area here to practice dashing, you can't really die here, you can practice it all you want. And then uh, you have to get up there to proceed. Uh, this is also sort of my way of weeding out game journalists because they won't be able to make it past this point, but you jump up and then dash. And then I sort of mix the two mechanics together. So you shift to get down to here, followed by a, a fairly simple dash. I'm still trying to introduce the dash so the jumps are pretty easy. Uh, you have to pay attention to the grayed out blocks though. I should, well not grayed out, just disabled. And then the rest of the level is pretty straightforward. You'll notice this block casts a shadow to make it easier to see where the disabled blocks are. That's something I tried to do throughout the game, but I missed a few spots. And then here, there's a bit of a more advanced thing where you have to shift and then immediately dash afterwards. Again, I'm trying to like ease in the mechanics, but you have to add some challenges, so you just do it like that. And then that's the level. Level four is Flicker. This is one of the first levels I made for the game, actually. And uh, it introduces these yellow things. And these yellow things actually weren't even in the level until much later on. I went back and basically redid the whole level so that these could fit in them. So the original level, just imagine the same level just without them. And how these work is, well, uh, I mean, your first instinct here is the only way to get across to the next area is to dash. So let's try that. And by doing that, you're also going to dash into the yellow thing, which reveals that it shifts when you dash into it. So that's like your way of shifting in the air, you dash into those yellow things. You have to be dashing, you can't just touch it. And uh, again, you can only shift on the ground, so you can't like undo it. So again, more just tutorial-ish stuff. There's a jump here, which you have to jump over that spike, or you can shift to make it a little easier. And then there's a couple one block jumps. And this is a more practical example of how the yellow thing works, which I call them shift orbs, so that's what I'm going to call them in the video. You can sort of see where the next block is, so you just jump and dash and that'll reveal the next one. You can't just shift to get to that block or you'll fall and die, so you have to use the orbs in pretty much every case. So that would be like that. And then this is sort of a, this is a bit of a trick, but I think it fits really nicely where you have to make those spikes solid so that you can dash into the orb, which will disable them. The rest of the level is pretty straightforward. A lot of people struggle with this part for some reason. I'm wondering if it's because these blocks are like a weird different texture, but uh, it's sort of just a mix of shifting and platforming. Don't fall down there, you have to do it again. And then uh, just a bit more usage of the shift orb, and that's the level. So level 5 is the first icon level, and I'll show you what that means later on. So you just dash into here, I'm still kind of going over all the main mechanics in the game. This I would consider to be like the last tutorial tutorial level. Uh, this orb is, uh, I don't want to say a troll, but it's a troll, don't hit it, go over it or under it or these spikes will appear. 
So this is the first icon or player, and how it works is, uh, well, it's a Geometry Dash icon. What could it do? Good thing I've given you this very open space to figure out what it does, and you can learn that you dash into it and it gives you a height boost, wow. And then how generous it even respawns a few seconds later. All of them do that. So all the icons in the game are completely randomized. Jordan's the one who drew most of them. And so whenever you kill one or whenever you load a level, they'll always have a random texture and a random color. Some of them have exceptions though. For example, this icon is guaranteed to always be red and yellow, just so it's easier to see. So you'll notice it's always a red primary, yellow secondary. But for the most of it, the icons are completely randomized and we try to draw as many as we can. It is really fun when you're like playing the game and you're like, oh my God, I recognize that icon. That one looks like Wolsey. Although, uh, there's a very limited color palette for the icons, like you'll never see a pink icon or like a green one. They're only like colors that fit well with nine circles, so red, yellow, black, gray, white, I think light green, stuff like that. Anyways, you get the point, dash into this, use it as a height boost. And then, uh, what's this? You have to hit two of them back to back. So what this teaches you is that uh, dashing into an icon restores your dash. You can kind of see that based on the fact that you're leaving a trail. Although that's not the best indicator, granted, but it works. So you can dash, and then you can dash again. And whoops, uh, I didn't shift, so I have to do it again. Which is actually a very intentional move, because that way I force players who aren't paying attention to do this part twice. And it's good practice for how these regain your dash, because this is going to be a very important mechanic later on. Uh, in this case, there's an icon just floating there, but you can't fall. If you shift, uh, you can sort of see what you have to do. This is the more practical example of icons restoring your dash. So you'd go one, two, and then the shift orb catches you. This icon's just on a jetpack. I don't know. The icons that move are on jetpacks because I felt like it. And that's the icon level. Uh, if you jump down here, by the way, there's also an Easter egg, but I'm not gonna show you what it is. All right, so level six, Midnight Killer. Uh, Chloe's favorite level. Also, if you don't get the pun in the name, play more Geometry Dash. This is like the first proper level. The difficulty ramps up a lot. The problem is like, I can make easy levels and I can make hard levels, but the middle ground is really difficult for me. So starting from here, there's quite a bit of a difficulty spike. In this case, you're just like, what the hell do I do? And the answer is, actually this is not the correct solution, but it is fun to do anyways. You can dash onto here. I know you can, I've done it many times. Kind of have a coyote jump. There we go, and then shift, and then you can get on top of here. You can't even do anything up there, it's just, it's just a flex. So anyways, this is where like everything you've learned in the past few levels comes together for like actual practical usages. In this case, dash and then dash back into the sh into the shift orb. You'll kind of see that as a recurring theme where the shift orb saves you last minute. This little bit is just a bunch of back-to-back jetpacks because I don't know, I found it really satisfying to hit them. And then uh yeah, so you can see it's definitely picking up. Fall, and then you actually use this icon again to get a second height boost, because they all respawn after three seconds, although most icons that you have to reuse have been shortened to respawn after like one or two seconds. I think that one's a two second. Uh, so now you can see there's a shift orb up there. Also, you'll notice uh, one of the icons is the bunny icon, that one over there. We tried to add a few like extra icons that aren't actually in GD or texture pack ones or ones coming in 2.2 just to spice things up a bit. So when it was here, dash, dash, dash back into here. Now you're up here. The game is like, again, the game's a, I would personally call it a puzzle platformer. So I tried to kind of put a puzzle focus on it as opposed to like combat focused, even though that would align more with Chloe's nine circles lore. But I'm used to games like Hollow Knight, Celeste, V, 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 that kind of stuff. So I'm very familiar with puzzle platformer games. So that's the style I ended up making because I like it the most. Anyways, dash into here. Oh no, now this jetpack's fast. Uh, what do you do here? You gotta wait to line it up just right. If you shift, you're just gonna fall. The way you can tell if a platform will disappear when you shift or not is by the outline. If the outline is bright red, then it's a shift one. If it's pink, then it's not. 
And often I'll make the shift platforms look different from the other objects in the level. So you'll notice these ones have red lines on them, but the ones over to the right of the screen over here are yellow because those always stay the same. Anyways, uh, boom, boom. And then just like before you reuse this icon, uh, up here, one final dash, and that's the level. So yeah, definitely starting to pick up. All right, level seven, wave check. This is the first wave level. You'll see what I mean by that. What could that thing be over there? Who knows, let's fall. So a lot of people saw this icon and were like, oh my God, Colin, I can't believe you didn't let us ground dash. And again, maybe I should have enabled that, but um, I'm lazy and I'm stubborn. So you just have to do a low jump, dash into it. And like many, many other times, you dash into the ship orb to catch yourself last minute. In this case, those spikes will toggle, so we can get up like that. Some of these jumps are very precise, especially for people who aren't as familiar with platformer games. And so for that, I'm sorry. Get good, it's a skill issue. <laughs> no, but seriously, I, I definitely think I made this a bit too tricky. But for someone like me, I'm still happy with the final result. So hit it again. This is probably like one of my favorite levels in the game, just for how this mechanic is introduced. So the player gets up here and they're like, yo, what the hell is this thing? The first thing they're gonna try obviously is dash into it because it sort of looks like the shift orb. So you dash into it and then that happens. You kind of get this little bounce. What could it mean? And so you try holding and you're like, wait, what the hell just happened? So if you're, if you're holding the dash button while you do that, you kind of fly up like that. And so that's sort of all you need to understand exactly how this works. You hold the dash button, as you're holding, you start flying up, and as soon as you let go of the dash button, you fall back down with a little bit of forwards momentum. So you just keep holding, and notice you have a ton of time to react to that, because the player is just gonna be holding down. You have all the time in the world to see those spikes coming up and let go. And there's actually nothing up here, that's the funny part. Because what you have to do is go back to this thing and then hit it from the other direction, which will take you up to here. You'll also notice an extra layer of the music gets added when you do that. That was very inspired by like Portal. Whenever you're going flying, it adds a bit of hype to the music. I really like that. So I threw it in there. Mudstep did an insane job with the music. So uh, if you try to go up here, you'll be sent back to the start of the level. I'm not gonna actually do it. But uh, yeah, this takes you back to the start of the level, which is kind of funny because it almost feels worse than dying if you do that. Like, oh my god, now I have to do the whole thing over again, even though if you were to die, you'd have to do that anyways. I could have just added a wall that kills you, but it just feels like so much more progress is lost when you don't die, but get sent back to the start. Anyways, the correct way to go is shift and then head up to here. Uh, and then this is a... I probably could have explained this part better, but for this you just hold down and it kind of shows you more advanced usage of the wave where as long as you keep holding down, you're gonna bounce off of them back and forth. When you dash into a wave orb, you always start by going up and then it'll reverse your direction when you hit one and so on. It works like the wave in Geometry Dash. That's why I call it the wave orb. Oh yeah, one quick other thing I wanted to mention, this is kind of off topic, but uh, so again, remember how I said that there's like a piano layer that's added to the music whenever you shift and how it's like, it's it's based on the song Nine Circles, obviously. But uh, for some reason on the web version of the game, it just wouldn't sync properly. And so on the last day before released, I was panicking like, oh my God, I can't get this to sync properly. How the hell am I gonna fix this? I have no time. And the fix we ended up coming up with was so weird. It was like, you have to set all of the song layers back to zero, wait one frame, and then set their time back to what they were at before and that'll sync all of them up. Cause Unity knows the current position of a song. It's like, oh, this one's at exactly seven seconds into the song. But somehow on the web version that desyncs. So Unity will think it's seven seconds into the song but it's actually playing from like nine seconds. But if you set it back to zero, wait a frame and then set it back to like seven, that fixes it, I don't know how. All right, level eight, demon moment. At this point, I just kind of gave up with the level names. This is just because Chloe says moment a lot. I don't know, like if you were to talk about playing Minecraft, you'd go, oh my God, Minecraft moment. 
Who am I kidding? I do that too. This was actually the last level I built for the game. I built it the night before it was released. Uh, it was gonna, it was going to be level nine, but I think it makes more sense as level eight. So uh, it's more practice on the wave orb. So dash into it. Uh, get used to like the forward momentum when you let go. That dash orb's covered up. The wave orb, I mean. I guess you could also call it a dash orb, but that's already a GD thing. So shift, and now you can go the other direction. Again, it's based on the direction you're facing or the direction you dashed into it from. Uh, this is actually a tight jump. So you just do it like that. And again, the difficulty definitely picks up here. Also, you can see this is one of the 2.2 icons. Again, we, we made a lot of icons. So uh, you'll notice if I shift, this block gets in the way. Whoops, I'm stupid. So yeah, the right way to do it is like that. It's kind of tricky, especially since if you shift while you're in a wall, the wall will kill you. So if you're like, if the player is like here when you shift, uh, the wall will activate and then kill you because you're stuck in it. Uh, yeah, this part could definitely be better. Also, there's this weird bug where like here, for example, you can get stuck on a ledge. It like thinks you're both grounded and jumping at the same time. It could not find a fix for that. I'm, I have to say, I'm really happy with the level designs in this game, but there's definitely some parts where I feel like I was too mean, but when I was thinking of nerfing them, I was like, eh, skill issue. I don't want to make the game too easy, I just want to make it fair. Like, I want it to be hard, but I want the mistakes to still feel like your fault, and I think this area didn't do the best job at that, but whatever. Maybe I could have made the jump a little higher. But again, I wanted a low jump and a slow character to kind of emphasize the dash and the shifting mechanics. Celeste does that too, that's sort of what inspired me. This, this game takes a lot of inspiration from Celeste, even though that wasn't really intentional, it just kind of happened. Uh, so here's another example of chaining wave orbs. You go one, two. If you touch a block while you're in wave mode, it'll kill you just like in Geometry Dash. So uh, make sure to release. What's interesting about this part is that you actually have to hit these wave orbs again to go back up in the other direction, but we can't right now, because if we shift right now, we're just gonna fall and die. But if we don't shift, uh, you're just gonna run into that platform. It's also worth mentioning that wave orbs do not restore your dash when you release from them, because that leads to way too many breaks. Like, you could just dash right back into the wave orb after releasing or all this crazy stuff. So anyways, here, uh, one, whoops. <laughs> Okay, so as I was saying, this part's like a little chain, you go boom, boom, boom. You can actually skip this icon entirely and just dash right back into this one. That's like a speedrun strat, I guess. But I'm, I'm not gonna force that, because that seems way too difficult. I could have, but I was like, meh. And then similarly here, there are originally spikes here and an icon you dash into, but I think it's more fair to just give yourself a safe spot to relax. And then dash back into this, uh, other orb, which you've seen earlier in the level because you've actually hit it, but now you're going the other way, which takes you to this spot. And you already know I had to put a club step monster in this game. H how could I not? So there's a club step monster. You can just get past him like that. And then you actually use the club step monster here by getting on top of him to shift and then hit this icon again. Uh, this level's actually pretty long. Yeah, these last few levels are long. Because again, the first five, I would just consider to be tutorial levels. Nothing too special though, just some fancy wave usage. You'll notice here, uh, if you try to wave, you'll go into that red thing. So shift once more. And there you go. This is probably one of my favorite levels. I like that one a lot. Okay, level nine, two-sided. This one's, this is a spicy one. Again, I was actually going to put this level before the previous level, but I think this makes more sense. Because this one is... It gets tough. I could have made this part easier, but I think keeping it difficult is justified just because it's right at the beginning of the level. So if you mess up, you can just immediately retry. That's like another game dev tip I've picked up along the way. Don't be afraid to put hard stuff at the beginning because that's where you have the most chances to try again. If that makes any sense. Uh, here, so this level is all about going up. It's just like a big tower level. Uh, in this case, uh, this this part confuses a lot of people, but I left a little gap to kind of indicate, like, hey, you can shift and fall. It doesn't help that in this level, the toggleable blocks are all in yellow, 
and I think the non-toggable blocks are in red. I changed it up every level. Tried to give them all a bit of a different style. Oh well. So uh, another dash orb. Hit that. I don't think I mentioned this yet, but uh, if you dash into a shift orb while you're in wave mode, it will trigger. So you'll notice I was in wave mode. I passed through the shift orb and it actually did trigger. And I'm going to reuse it again here to get up here. And then drop and dash up into this one. There's another thing I think I forgot to mention. If you wave into an icon, it'll automatically kill the icon, give you the height boost, and also regain your dash. So the only way to regain a dash after the wave is to hit an icon. Keep that in mind for the next level. So the reason, I guess the reason this level is called two-sided, uh, well I guess in general it's just this level has two sides to it as you're climbing the tower, but this part literally has two sides, you can go either way. We'll start by going right, but I'll show you both. This part's interesting, because you go up here, you cannot shift here, no matter where you stand, you will die right away. I wonder if you can stand right on the edge, actually. I don't know, maybe. Speedrunner strat, question mark? Uh, so, you, you can only really go one way from here, and it's up through here. You got this little wacky nine circles effect. And now it takes you above, which is interesting. I, I like how that came out. And then, it's pretty simple platforming from here, nothing too crazy. Uh, just get up, wait for the icon to respawn. Oh, it starts by going down. <laughs> Alright, and here's what happens if you do this whole thing in the other direction. It's pretty much identical, but, uh, wait, is that the default cube? No, it's, uh, white secondary. See, that's what I love about these random icons. You're like, oh my god, I recognize that one. So, uh, it's not perfectly symmetrical. You'll notice this bit's different, but it's still just pretty basic platforming. I don't know, maybe one of them's faster for speedrunning. This game isn't meant to be a speedrunning game, but I, I, would, I would definitely say I encouraged it with the timer. Alright, level 10, Slaughterhouse. <laughs> this one is, uh... If you've played Celeste, you'll immediately understand what this level is inspired by. Uh, Celeste does this thing where they, they often like to give you really, really long challenges that you have to get through without a single break. So like, Summit C, Core C, End of Farewell. And this level's no exception. This little uh, archway here is kind of inspired by the little thing you're in before the drop in nine circles. So in this level, once you're going, you are just freaking going. There's no stopping. I wonder if I can do this first try. I'm not even gonna try to explain everything. I'm just gonna go for it. I do have some things I wanna say about this level though, cause I really like the final design of it. Okay. So the main thing about this level is that it is absurdly hard, but I love that. Again, it's very Celeste inspired because it's possible and you will continue to make progress if you just keep trying at this level. It might look basically impossible at first, but as you keep chipping away at it, you'll get better and better at certain parts. Honestly, in that sense, it's just like a Geometry Dash level too. Just keep trying, you'll get it. Again, one thing I really like is that every mistake genuinely feels like it's your fault as opposed to the game's fault. Maybe I'm wrong, but to me it feels that way. So, they don't feel like deaths as much as they feel like you're actually learning a little bit each time. And then when you finally do pull it off, it feels incredible. You're like, oh my god, I did that. I can't believe I, I thought that was impossible at first. I actually freaking pulled that off. This feels so good. Can I beat it? Can I beat it? Notice you have to hit that jetpack icon last, so you get the dash boost from it. Uh, again, uh, when you hit an icon, it resets your dash. You're going to be using that a lot in this level. One, two, three, and... Alright, these last few icons are guaranteed to always have those sprites and colors. And then this last door slows down the game. You hit this giant thing. And that marks the end of the game. <laughs> this ending sequence I made in like 15 minutes, like the night before the game was done. And that takes you back to the credits. <laughs> I do have to say though, I really like those last few dashes in the level where again, those icons are always guaranteed. So you're always gonna dash into like the colon icon and Chloe's icon and Sobros's icon. But more importantly, I just love how that part feels. The whole level is brutal hard, and then those last few hits are super straightforward. You just dash, and then boost up, and then dash, and boost up. It's very easy, 
but those last hits feel really, really awesome to get because you just went through this insane part and now you just do these last few hits like bang, 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 bang. And oh my God, that just feels so good. That was very inspired by Mario Odyssey, actually. If you've seen the last few inputs before the end of Mario Odyssey, you're literally just slashing into a rock. But it just looks so hype, especially in speedruns. You're like, yes, I freaking finally did it. And you're just mashing the button. That's kind of the energy I wanted to capture. Also the energy of like, oh my God, I finally beat it. This feels so good. I think I did a good job at that. M maybe I didn't. Feel free to argue in the comments. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's pretty much the whole game. There's 10 levels total. First five again are tutorial-ish. Uh, again, thank you immensely to <laughs> all the people who helped make this game possible, especially Nilly. You saw those character animations. They were so freaking good. Uh, will I make more games in the future? Probably, if I have ideas. Again, I've been dying to make a game forever, so I'm so glad I finally got the chance to. So, uh, that's about all I have to say. If you have any questions, I would be more than happy to answer them in the comments. Maybe this video was dumb, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, uh, or just enjoying the game. Oh, and happy birthday, Chloe, too. I know it's a week now, but you are a freaking awesome friend. Thank you for everything you've done for the channel. Uh, I appreciate it more than you could ever imagine. <laughs> Alright, see ya. Bed emoji.